In the beginning, there was nothing. Then. Some people think that God doesn't exist because there is so much evil in the world and if God existed then he would punish evil. As well as if they pray for their grandma, if they pray for their mom or their father to get better and God didn't do it then they say that well God doesn't exist because he didn't answer my prayers. So that's a fair question. Does God exist when I pray for one of my family members and they end up dying after I ask God to heal them from their sickness? Does God exist if there's so many natural disasters and things that go on in this world and so many wars and issues that happen in government and politics and so many poor people all over the world? How can God possibly exist if all of these evils exist? Well, the fact of the matter is if God had gotten rid of evil when Adam and Eve sinned, we wouldn't even exist. See, God wanted things to play out so that we can actually exist, so we can have more people in the kingdom of heaven. And at this point, when Adam and Eve sinned, he wanted to weed out all the evil. And ultimately, in the end, God will destroy all evil, but he will have a people for himself in heaven to enjoy eternity with him. And since Adam and Eve sinned, the world became corrupt. We remember from the Garden of Eden that Eve ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? They already had good. They didn't need that, they already had it. But when she ate the fruit, she received the knowledge of evil, which means that now sin entered the world and also entered Adam and Eve. And now there will be some hard times. There'll be pain, there will be suffering, there'll be wars, there'll be destruction, there'll be chaos in this world. But see, God says in the Bible that our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. So we can't understand the decisions that God makes because his ways are higher above ours than the heavens are from the earth. Our ways are based on a false knowledge. You know what's sad is that some people, they ate two for five Big Macs and McDonald's every day. And now they got diabetes and they blame God because they prayed for healing and he didn't heal them. But they knew what was going to happen before they ate that last bite. How can you blame God for that? The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? And in the next verse, verse 10, it says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. And we see right there that God is not mocked there are actually consequences for disobeying God's commandments. And the truth is that we see it all the time. People get hurt when people sin, right? And that's the very reason why we question God when we look at the evil in the world. People get hurt when people sin. That is not God's will for us. But see, the problem comes in when we try to use the sword of God's justice, but we can't even pick it up off of the floor in order to swing it. See, we can't know the mind of God and what his decisions should be. We can't counsel God. We can't tell him what to do because we don't even know. Why should somebody trust us to punish someone or not to punish someone? Why should God give us control over his justice when the Bible tells us that our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked? It says, who knows how bad it is? And we can see again in the Bible in Genesis chapter 8 verses 21 that it says the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground 
because of humans, even though every inclination or every intent of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Do we really know what justice is? Justice is when we do evil, we deserve punishment. So really everybody would be in trouble if God started swinging this sword of justice around. What if every time somebody did something wrong, God would send them straight to hell? But you know what? If we were in charge, if many of us were in charge, man, we would condemn people right away. If somebody cuts you off on the road, you'd be like, man, you just don't know what I do to you. Somebody run into you with a basket at Costco, man, it's about to pop off, right? It, it, it'll be all over. And that's the reason why he is in control and we're not. But we can see that many of us who are in Christ came out of the world and we definitely wouldn't have made it if that was the case. God has shown us so much mercy and grace. He's, he's blessed us in a tremendous way. We can see the acts and works of God in our own lives. We've experienced God in ways greater than even seeing him in this life. That's why Jesus said, blessed is the one who believes and have not yet seen. As soon as people say something is evil, God exists. As soon as people say something is bad, God exists. As soon as people say, I don't like my life, you're looking for God because in God is true life, the life that we really want. This is imperfect. God is perfection and he is what we need. Immediately atheism goes out the door. Immediately agnosticism goes out the door. Immediately all of these false ideas and philosophies go out the door because we automatically suggest that God exists when we say that evil exists. Because good doesn't lie within ourselves, good lies within God. Because survival of the fittest doesn't do it. The universe doesn't determine whether something is good or bad. Our morality will be based on opinion, so that wouldn't work. Because who determines what's right and wrong? And so there has to be an objective moral standard of good. And that's the reason why the existence of evil actually proves God's existence. When someone questions you about the existence of evil and the existence of God, I learned something very powerful from Robbie Zacharias, you know, when he was living. I would watch his videos a lot and, you know, God bless his family. I, I pray that they be comforted in this time since he passed away. But you have to look at the person behind the question. It's very important to look at the person behind the question because it might be something going on in their life that's causing them to question God's goodness. And there's a way that we can approach this person. It's not always that we have to give an answer to the person's question right away, but we have to ask certain questions in order to see where is this question coming from? Where is this statement coming from? What difficulty are you having in your life that's causing you to ask this question or to make this statement? That's what we have to think about before we answer a question sometimes dealing with the problem of evil. We can't escape this problem of evil in this life. The very fact is that sin enters into us once we even come into existence. Once we're born, we're born into sin. We can't escape it. And that's the reason why 1 John tells us that we cannot say that we have no sin. But it's through Jesus Christ that we receive righteousness. That's the reason why we always have to ask God for forgiveness. In the Bible, King David writes a song and he sends it to the choir director. In Psalms chapter 14 verses 1 and it says it again in Psalms chapter 53 verse 1. That only fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and their actions are evil. Not one of them does good. But it says again in Psalms chapter 10 verses four through seven, the wicked are too proud to seek God. They seem to think that God is dead. Yet, they succeed in everything they do. They do not see your punishment awaiting them. They snare at all their enemies. They think nothing bad will ever happen to us. We will be free of trouble forever. Their mouths are full of cursing, lies, and threats. Trouble and evil are on the tips of their tongues. We read again 
in Psalms chapter 10 verses 12 through 13. It says, Arise, O Lord, punish the wicked, O God. Do not ignore the helpless. Why do the wicked get away with despising God? They think God will never call us to account. Oh, but I tell you that God will call everyone into account. There is a great judgment day coming. And you probably have heard this many times before, but now even more so, Jesus Christ will return very soon. He will take his people with him. And those who have chosen not to believe in Jesus and rejected him will remain here. And there will be a great time of judgment for seven years of tribulation. And then the end will come. The Bible tells us that tomorrow is not promised. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior today, God said he's going to punish all sinners because he's given us enough time to make the right decision. Today is the day to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior because the Bible tells us that the day that you hear the voice of God, do not harden your heart. And the voice of God comes to his word when people speak it. He always sends opportunities for us to receive Jesus. But we have to be honest about what God is doing in our lives. We reject it because we want to keep the sin and the desires in this world. But the Bible tells us, Jesus says that, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose their very own soul? It's not worth it. Come to Jesus today. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today, you are translated out of the world and into the light of Christ Jesus. And you're no longer a slave to sin, but you are a child of God. If you want all the promises of God, if you want eternal life, receive Jesus today. He is waiting for you with his arms wide open. He's knocking at your door, telling you to open up and let me in so that you have peace. You can have joy. You can have strength. You can have all the things that you never thought you can possibly ever have. It's all in Christ. It's nowhere else. Don't look anywhere else. There's no other place where you can find the peace and joy and strength that you need. You have to come to Christ Jesus today. Call out to Jesus and be saved. Say this prayer that is on the screen. For all my Christians, you keep on fighting the good fight of faith. And you remember the reasons for the hope that you have in Jesus Christ and always be ready to give an answer.